trouble with is a fire in pit lane. Lots of leaking fuel. I can tell you there was no fire, but what actually happened here at Kmart Racing, unfortunately, I don't know whether there's a miscommunication or something, but Murph, Murph's car came down off the jacks, but the fuel was still connected, the fuel filler was still connected to the tank, and he took off and it ripped part of the fuel filler off, and fuel has spilled everywhere down here. The officials are very quickly onto it. They have doused it with uh, all sorts of foam to prevent a fire. We've got one of their crew, or one of the crew, one of the Kmart crew hit the deck, he's okay, he's up and about now, but boy oh boy, that could have been a, uh, a major moment then. Gee, what a mess. So you're saying, Rusty, that the hoses were still connected that when the car correct, took that off? That is correct, Matty, that the actual hose or the filler connection that flows down from the, um, the actual tank was still connected to the car. You'll see it there on the left hand side, look at that, oh man, what an ugly mess, and really dangerous. Well, how oh. lucky we didn't get a big explosion there. There is an enormous amount of fuel there, highly combustible material. They were onto it quickly with the foam, but yeah. how easily could that have erupted into an inferno? Look at the fuel. Team right. effort, and at times there is... Oh, dear. Let's at listen. Times... Sorry, Rudy. Hey, yeah, yes. Listen to this. This is it. You've got to stop in the pit bay for five minutes. Repeat, five minutes. Greg Murphy's reaction. He's side by side with the Castrol Commodore at the moment. Stephen Richards on the inside. Murphy on the outside is continuing to attack, but he will be shocked by what he just heard on the radio. It's going to be the longest five minutes sitting still inside a race car. So it's going to be five and a half by the time he comes through and basically completes the drive through penalty because he has to knock it back to 40 k's there. So all this time is added. Remember, he's got to sit, from what I understand, in the pit bay for five minutes. Time starts now. Boy, oh boy. Might as well get out and have some lunch. Oh. Just, uh, what a great rust. Yeah, your knee is. I mean, it's... Well, Murphy's out of the car, guys. He is fuming. He came down pit lane and he said, look, this is crazy business. Might as well put the car out the back. They're telling Todd to get in the car. No, he's going... <laughs> I think he's going to take uh, use of the facilities here, but he is fired up. It, it, that's too tough. That's, in my, to, to my mind, is ridiculous. You know, I know safety is one thing, but uh, I can't comment if anybody got injured or not, but it seemed like they cleared it up and, um, you know, to serve that type of thing, I mean, is, is just too tough. It's an wow. awfully long panel. That effectively puts them right out of the running, not just back, but two laps behind. We're half race distance now, and yet another major contender has been KO'd here at Mount Panorama. It's looking good for Castrol Perkins and sandwiched in between them at the moment on the track, of course, Mark Scaife. This crew, Woodsy, has been flawless throughout the first eight rounds of the championship. The first nine rounds, in fact, their pit stops have been slick. And look at Murph. He's fuming, absolutely furious. He knows that his shot at this title has gone. Five minutes is an eternity to be sitting there with nothing happening. And of all places, Mount Panorama. That's the story of Greg Murphy. He's just sitting there, biding his time, doing his time. Serving the penalty. There's nothing he can do when the stewards say it. And he is. He's going off the Richter scale.